Hello, I'm Dale tonight. Acanthus Curious and Brachy Panels in his T Spotlight. We're going to cover the ones I have in my collection. You're going to see something unique from my Acanthus Curious Gina Colada, and you're going to take a look at some of my Brachies. All of them eat on camera. Enjoy. Acanthus Curious first, Rogue. Acanthus Curious Chakawana, the Bolivian Salmon Pink. Kind of reminds me of a smaller, stockier, um, built. Last year, Dora species has a brilliant black velvety legs. Uh, going into the knees there, you get the little white stripe patterns. And then the rest of the legs down to the toes have this little smokish grayish color. Uh, beautiful abdomen, really dark red where the abdomen meets the carapace. And it hits a little bit of a lighter pink towards the back of the abdomen. And a brilliant black carapace. And these are really, really beautiful tees. Um, they have a tendency to look a little strange right before they molt because they turn into this really uh, dull, ugly brown color. But right after they freshly molt, they actually stay that nice freshly molted look for a very long time. They really keep their colors right up until they molt. At least mine has thus far with this molten cycle. I say he, but this is a female, a big girl. Right now she's around four and a half inches. After the next molt, she'll be well, well over five inches. Here's a smaller Acanthoscuria Earthwalker. In Subtilis, the Chaco Mousy Brown. You don't see a whole lot of these in people's collections. Uh, I'm not sure why. I mean, you sometimes you can find them dirt cheap, and then sometimes you can see them uh, get a little pricey. This thing was lightning fast when it was a sling. Very, very skittish. Uh, would hide for uh, months on end. I wouldn't see her. She would excavate all the way down to the bottom of her enclosure and just stay down there and hide out. But uh, now that she's around, she's over two inches now, probably around two and a half inches, she's really calmed down a lot. I used to not even be able to open the enclosure and she would try to literally run out. And um, I mean, just, that was her goal. Every time I would open it up, she would try to run out whether I was feeding her or not. And it really made it difficult to try to feed her sometimes or film her which is why I don't have a lot of film on her but now that she's calmed down quite a bit with her age I can get her on film she's a really nice looking little acanthoscuria I really have enjoyed raising this little tea um, I got her as a freebie but she is an awesome tea Scarlet my acanthoscuria gina colada the Brazilian giant white knee ferocious eater and something very interesting happened when I was filming this. It was a first for me. This was the first time a tarantula ever attacked the camera in this way, which you're going to see coming up here. Not only did Scarlet attack the camera, but she actually, for a second, almost crawled onto the camera and onto my face. It happened very, very fast. It freaked me out. I almost dropped the camera in the enclosure on her. And... It was by far one of the freakiest moments I've ever had in my collection. You're going to see it right here. She has never done that before. I actually wasn't as close to her. As it appeared, I was a little ways off, which is why it kind of shocked me. She actually was completely out of the enclosure with just her back leg still inside of it. She was completely out of it and attached to the camera. And uh, But that's what it takes sometimes to get some of these shots. On to the brachies. This is Fahrenheit, my brachypema bomai, the Mexican fire leg. Suspect male, hair kicker. This is one of the tarantulas that actually I was not always on board with or I should say appreciate the complete beauty of this tea. This tarantula is absolutely gorgeous, has very very fiery bright red knees going down to the, the legs there. Um, sometimes you get to looking at other people's tarantulas, you see the bee smithy, you see the bee bomai, you see the abapolosum, some of the other ones. Um, you know, G. Rosea, some of the more common ones that you see in other people's collection, you don't appreciate the beauty until you own one. When you actually see it with your own eyes, and it's a lot different than watching somebody else's on camera, 
And for a long time, I had to talk myself into getting one of these. And they weren't on my wish list. I, but now that I have them, I can't even come. I can't even believe I didn't have an own one before because these are an amazing, amazing tarantula. Um, I love the Bracky genus to begin with, and these just don't disappoint. You got to own one of these if you don't have one. And here's another one of my favorite Brackies. That's the B Vagons. This is Fire, the Mexican Red Rump. These things can eat like big, giant heavyweights. Mine is a very gentle giant. A, around five inches now, maybe a little over five inches, but just a sweetheart. Um, never throws a threat posture. Always very, um, you know, kind of relaxed and chilled in there. Sometimes a little shy and maybe a little, little elusive and defensive at times, but not bad at all for, um, for what the appearance looks like. It looks more menacing than it actually is, which is why I love vagans. Sometimes they, mine at least, can be a little uh, bipolar. There are times I open up the enclosure and she kind of gives me a look like just close the lid. But for the most part, this is a pleasant tea. Here's Arclight, my Brachypama smithy, the Mexican red knee. Another one that I had to talk myself into getting once I got it and it starts to show these colors. I really, really appreciate the beauty of these uh of this tea, of this species. Suspect male, probably a little bit over two inches right now. The first shot I showed of Arclight was actually a month before this shot. And you can see in this shot, compared to the last one, how long the legs have gotten and how they look a little bit different. A uh, little, little slender there. Uh, most likely uh, a male's grown pretty quick for a brachy. I got it as a one quarter inch. And uh, has it been maybe a little bit over a year and it's grown pretty fast for brachy. Here's one of my favorite brachies and favorite species in the collection, in the hobby, excuse me. This is Eclipse, my brachy prima abapolosum, the Honduran curly hair. And this was on my wish list from day one. This is one of the tarantulas that got me really uh, pumped to uh, get different species other than uh, some of your. Um, you know, more of the exotic looking ones like the uh, the pokies and the summer poet species. Uh, these terrestrial ones, you know, this is a very unique looking tarantula. Um, it's one of those teas you, from talking to other people, you either love the way this tarantula looks or you hate it. You have people all across the board say that this thing is ugly. Some say that albopolosums are beautiful. I think they're very beautiful. I think they're underrated with their beauty sometimes. Uh, and from what I hear, a lot of people have great temperaments with their uh, abapolosums. That's not the case with mine. Mine is very uh, temperamental. Um, I don't think I could ever pick this tarantula up without literally might get bitten by this one. Just doesn't like to be messed with. It's a pet rock. Sits in the same spot for weeks and weeks. Doesn't move. Eats very well. Has a nice growth rate, but very beautiful. It's a classic look of a uh, Honduran curly hair is a very good example of one. Now I'm very proud and happy to own this one. Wouldn't mind getting another one because this is one of my favorite species and I wouldn't mind getting one I can actually handle and get out more. But this is an awesome Brachypelma. And next up we have my favorite Brachypelma of all and that's my B. Amelia, the Mexican painted red leg. One of my favorites in my collection. If you don't know um, the very first night I got this tarantula, uh, she ended up breaking her leg and uh, had a little bit of trouble there. I had to uh, eventually amputate the leg when she next molted because she had difficulty because the leg was still broken when she molted. and she So I ended up having to uh, amputate the leg so she can get out of her molt. She was stuck in it. That experience happened early on in my uh first year of tarantula keeping and it really taught me a lot I knew then I could uh, take care of these animals when I went through that the carapace the triangle the classic triangle on the Amelia as you can see has been split in half her last molt kind of just pulled uh, some of that black off and uh, it's not uncommon a lot of people have Amelia's where that happened I just refer to this one as my Pamphibedius Amelia because she has that classic Pamphibedius look there 
um, but she's an awesome tea. Uh, these are really pricey if you get them as adults, but they're well worth the money if you can get your hands on one. And they're fun to raise as slings, and they're tremendous eaters. I mean, this is a great species own. So if you're looking for something with a lot of color, a lot of variety, in these genus, the Bracket Palma and the Acanthus curia, you're going to find that. They have so much variety within each genera, you're going to definitely find a species that you like. And if you're looking to move up from beginner to intermediate, you can't go wrong with the Acanthus curia. It's a little bit harder to take care of than a Bracket Palma or a Gramasola, but they're awesome to zone, and you cannot go wrong with the Agena Colada. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care and be safe. Intermediate stage from beginner, I can't is the way to go, man. I mean, if you like Gina Coladas, <laughs> these are great species to own. Each genus has their, they're just amazing fuckers. Beginner and looking for a first time tarantula, Brachy Palmas are the way to go for me. I rec 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 recommend in that genus to uh, choose from, and you can't go wrong with a Gina Galata. Gina Galata? <laughs> Fuck me, man. Kansas Scarys can be a little moody and sometimes can be, uh, whatever the fuck. Deal of the night. This is the T Spotlight series. We're gonna cover the Agent of Colada. <laughs> Just the Agent of Colada, nothing else. Pama Genius, I'm gonna show you all the ones I own in my collection. And. <laughs> fuck! Jesus. In this T Spotlight, we're gonna cover the ones I have in the genus. <laughs> Hello, I'm Dale of the Night, and on this Tea Spotlight series, we're going to. Shit. Collection. You're going to see something unique from one of my. Shit! I'm Dale of the Night, and on this Tea Spotlight, we're going to cover my. <laughs> my. Excuse me. Hello, I'm Dale of the Night, and on this. Spotlight, we're going to cover the Acanthus curia genus and the Brachypermis sp sp splits. I like, you're going to see something unique from my age in a colada and almost all the tarantulas eat in this video. Thanks for watching. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Scurio genus and the Brachypama genus. I'm going to cover all the ones I have in, the, in my collection of those things that are a Canthuscurian fucking genus. So as you can see, if you love feeding responses from any genus, these are the species you should own. 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 Of the Acanthus genus and the Brachypelma genus. I'm going to show you all the teas I have in my collection under those 